Starship's fifth flight is approaching. Starship 30, the upper stage of the rocket for the new flight, has completed a makeover with all 18,000 all-new second-generation heat shield tiles. So, how has this massive change upgraded the Starship, and how close is SpaceX to Flight 5? Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As we know, Starship's fourth flight has been SpaceX's most successful to date. Starship achieved all its set goals and gave a spectacular and impressive performance, especially during its re-entry from space to Earth. However, some issues arose that rocket enthusiasts could not ignore, particularly significant damage to Starship's heat shield caused by high atmospheric temperatures, which left one side flap incomplete. Following this incident, Elon proposed a solution for Starship's next launch. He said, We're going to replace the whole heat shield on the ship, so the new heat shield tile is about twice as strong as the ones that were on the fourth flight. We want to put an ablative secondary structure, like basically a blade of protection behind the tile, so that if a tile cracks or comes loose, it doesn't cook the rocket. Yes, this has been done. And through the developments over the last two weeks on Ship 30 by SpaceX's workers, we've got a clear overview of the upgrades Elon Musk hasn't had the chance to explain in detail. First, let's talk about the ablative material. This layer is installed in the middle of the ship, on the surface of the flaps, and at the junctions between the flaps and the body. This material has specially designed holes to mount heat-resistant tiles, creating a tight and uniform bonding system. Notably, this new ablative material is significantly thinner than the original felt layer. The felt layer is the white thermal blanket placed between the rocket's steel body and the heat shield tiles. It acts as a backup thermal protection. This method has been used by SpaceX on four Starship vehicles in the previous four flights. So, has the felt layer been completely replaced by the ablative material? It seems like they would replace it entirely, but not exactly. SpaceX chose specific locations to implement this. On the body of the ship, some areas did not have the felt layer removed to install the ablative materials, but were allowed to directly install the new heat shield tiles. This is why we could see the rapid pace of SpaceX's mass heat shield tiled replacement. They focused on strengthening critical positions rather than the entire surface, a very smart method. At key locations, SpaceX removed the felt layer, then directly attached the ablative material to the rocket's body. However, SpaceX didn't stop there. To maintain the overall thickness of the thermal protection layer, ensuring it does not affect the ship's aerodynamic parameters, SpaceX added a thin supplemental felt layer on top of the black ablative material. This multi-layered structure applies to the flap area and the central part of the ship, extending across the entire surface where the new ablative material is used. Combining these two materials can offer several benefits. One, enhanced thermal insulation. The additional fill layer can help minimize heat transfer to the ship's structure. Two, mechanical protection. The felt layer can help protect the ablative material underneath from mechanical impacts during launch and reentry. And three, increased durability. The multi-layer structure can help extend the lifespan of the thermal protection system, allowing for more frequent reuse. And surprisingly, during Tim Dodd's tour of Star Factory before the fourth test flight, we learned that the heat shield improvements had been tested by Elon on Ship 29, and this method has been applied since the Starship Block 2 version. He said, We'd actually put some backup ablative there. Uh, one was two layers of ablative, one was one layer of ablative. Yep. The two layer of ablative did not burn through, the one layer of ablative did, but I'm not sure if it actually burnt through the steel too, but it did erode the single layer of ablative. But it just says that if you have two layers of, of our ablative, uh, it does not actually burn through. In addition to the new ablative material, we cannot overlook the new heat-resistant tiles. These changes include a new configuration for the heat shield sublayer and the replacement of most of the insulation tiles on the ship. Elon said, we're going to replace the whole heat shield on the ship, so the new heat shield tile is about twice as strong as the ones that were on the fourth flight. We can understand that these new tiles are going to be stronger, although the exact meaning of this statement is unclear. It might refer to better protection for the ship, higher durability, or both. However, when observed from the outside, the new tiles look almost identical to the old version in shape, size, and core structure. Improvements may have been made at the micro level, such as changes in material composition, enhanced surface coating, or adjustments in the manufacturing process. These changes could increase heat resistance and mechanical durability or improve the reusability of the tiles. Without official information, we can only make educated guesses based on knowledge of materials, science, and aerospace industry. Notably, SpaceX has replaced most of the tiles using a triple-pin mounting system on Starship Ship 30.
However, they have retained the adhesive mounting tiles in specific areas such as the barrel section junction, aerodynamic covers of the flaps, and flap edges. This may indicate that the tiles in these positions have met technical requirements or don't need to be changed at this stage. The retention of the hot gas seals on the flaps of Ship 30 is also noteworthy. This may imply SpaceX has not identified any significant issues related to the interface between the flaps and the ship's body in previous tests. These improvements reflect SpaceX's evolutionary approach to developing Starship. Instead of making big and sudden changes, they focus on step-by-step -step improvements to specific components based on data collected from previous tests. This method allows them to systematically optimize the spacecraft's performance and reliability while minimizing the risks associated with making major changes. Another development that Elon has implemented for Ship 30 in this refurbishment involves the gap filler material between the tiles. I mean, there's just things you can do, you know, to increase, increase the tile precision increase, decrease the gap, improve the gap filler, and thicken the tiles. According to Elon, SpaceX CEO, the right front flap of Ship 29 may have been damaged due to uneven gaps during production. This larger-than-expected gap allowed high-temperature plasma to penetrate the area, causing damage. To address this issue, SpaceX applied a proven solution, adding filler material to the gap areas. This method's been successfully used for the nose cone and aerodynamic covers on previous vehicles. Specifically, technicians added gap filler material to the following areas. The edges of all four body flaps, the static aerodynamic flaps connecting the body flaps to the ship applies only to the front flaps, certain areas on the ship's tank section, including horizontal joints and outer areas, and around some individual heat-resistant tiles, possibly those with sensors or in areas particularly sensitive to heat. The gap filler material is primarily felt, which is glued into place. In some cases, blue or red adhesive can be seen securing the filler in position. Adding this gap filler is particularly important for areas using adhesive mounted tiles. Since felt cannot be placed behind glued tiles, SpaceX may have observed higher than expected temperatures in these gaps. By gluing felt to the sides of the glued tiles, they aim to minimize heat transfer through the gaps. Additionally, the use of gap filler for some individual tiles may relate to repairs or replacements of damaged tiles. In some cases, tiles may need to be fixed in place due to broken mounting pins, and gap filler is used to ensure a tight fit. These enhancements not only address specific issues identified on Ship 29, but also improve the overall thermal protection capability of Starship. By minimizing gaps and improving the alignment between components, SpaceX strives to create a more uniform and effective thermal protection system. In the future, SpaceX may continue to refine this technique, possibly by developing new types of gap fillers or improving application methods. Each test flight will provide valuable data, allowing them to further improve Starship's design and manufacturing processes. Moving forward to the fifth Starship flight, Ship 30 conducted a static fire test even before the fourth flight took off early last month, as part of a rapid testing pace aimed at shortening the time between tests. However, the new massive change mentioned above will bring us another static fire test for the upcoming ship. On one hand, this will re-verify the engine performance for the second stage of Starship Flight 5. On the other, a static fire test will help SpaceX test the new heat shield tiles. As for Booster 12, after a successful static fire, the next key step will be installing the inner stage ring before a potential wet dress rehearsal ahead of next month's launch. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.